Alrighty, here we are in DCS World. It's 2.7.3, I believe. And today we are going to learn the cold startup procedure of the A10C C Warthog. Now, this is cold and dark, so usually the pre-fight check would be considered valuable because you are going to be turning off all of the components, making sure your radios are selected correctly prior to starting them up. Here we have a friend passing us by. Now the first thing that I like to do is I think of it in terms of electrical and then mechanical. So first off, electrical, we are going to start the battery. The main battery will power all of these lights, these indicators here, they show us various things that we're not going to get into detail right now about. And we're going to be able to test the indicators also by hitting that button. It shows that they're all working correctly. Second thing I, I like to turn on is my emergency floodlight. As you can see, it might be valuable to do that during night. I just do it all the time because it's a good thing to have. My inverter is going to be turned on. So now I have turned on the battery, my inverter, so I can check my fuel. Checking my fuel, it does work well. So next we're going to do electrical and then mechanical. Electrical or APU. The APU is a small motor that is used to actually start the bigger motors. On this A10C we have two motors. We have our left side and we have our right side. The APU uses air, compressed air, and it pushes it into the other motor and then it starts the other ones. So right now we turned on our generator. We're going to turn on that APU. The APU is going to rise in temperature and pressure. You can also hear it. As it is rising, it's going to level off about right there. Meantime, we are going to start some of these other systems. So as the APU is stabilizing off, we're going to take a moment to look at these radios. We've got three total radios here. Um, each of these radios needs to be turned on to transmit receive. This is the same kind of setup as this one. One of them's AM, one of them's FM, and then our UHF. So we're going to just turn that to main. Actually, let's turn it to both. This does have an ADF receiver on it, so when you do both, it it's not only the radio, but it also does the navigation. So our radios are turned on. That's good. This is our emergency stuff we don't need to worry about. Up here we don't need to worry about most of that. So we're pretty much halfway there. Our boost pumps for our fuel are going to be turned on. We're going to start up the left engine just by simply moving the throttle up. You're going to see the pressure go up, and it's putting the pressure into here, and it's spooling this one up. And you see the temperature climbing. RPM is going to start increasing. And you can do a visual check too if you want to. Well, left engine. So I do a little blip just to make sure it's all good. Now that that's set, let's do the right one. I'm 
boosting up our left and our right engines. Just looking at the gauges to make sure that the temperature is increasing, the RPM is increasing, and our pressure is increasing. We also have the hydraulic pressure over here. Once they all get into green, that will indicate it is stable. Alright, they are stable. Our APU, we no longer need this, so we can go over here, turn off our APU, and you see how this is blinking. Our master caution is blinking also. We're going to turn off our generator. I'm not, not blinking, not blinking, that's good. Our APU is off, and that temperature is going to fall down. Now to chest, test the hydraulics on it, we can open and close our speed brakes. There's no actual physical indicator for that. We can check our flaps. If you can actually see the flaps very well, you can see the shadow down there. And put them back there. We've got three green. And verify that the middle, right wheel, and left wheel are all green. So all that's looking good right now. So mechanically it's good, so I'm going to shut the cockpit down. Now we're going to do electrical stuff. Electrical, we're going to turn on the CDU and we're going to do the INS alignment at the same time. This is going to be the CDU bit test. It's going to go through a series of tests automatically. We don't need to do anything. We just turn on that switch. Once it's done, it will indicate that it's done. In the meantime, we're going to go over here and move this integrated flight controls test and do pre-flight bit test enter in and it's going to do a bunch of tests over there now while we're waiting for those three different things to test one two three we're going to turn on our SAS stability control stuff for pitch and raw yeah and our anti-skid so when we hit the brakes hard we don't just destroy our tires that's still testing what do we have down here our CDU is it lining pull up those are almost the finished ones altitude so. altitude okay we're gonna let that finish still now under here we have our, e our, our EAC, I have that mapped, and our altimeter should be clicked up also. So both of these should be clicked up. Oh, that's good. Look at once over. We're going to turn on our display units today, because it is the daytime. Seat, CQ, Nav, and EAC. Those are the ones we need to do. So it's still aligning. Okay, it says that the INS Nav is ready. But before we do something, we're going to load our flight plan. So this is the indicator. We're going to keep this to other all the time. But we're going to go to flight plan. And this is where we would load our flight plan here. <laughs> Once that loads, and our uh, central, and this switch has to be up, otherwise these two won't turn on. So once that loads, that'll be good. Our pre-flight bit is over so we can exit out of there and that bit relates to this the built-in test 
I'm gonna flip that up once and get our HUD. Alright, we don't need the flight plan menu. I'm just waiting for these radios to turn up. Alright. So if you're in a mission and you're trying to get information loaded in, you just do load all. It'll have the asterisk right there. When it's done loading, it will show an asterisk next to each one of those things. While that's loading in, let's look at our countermeasures. We're going to turn on our missile warning system, our electro electronic countermeasure jammer. And turn on our radar warning. And we're going to change our countermeasures. Turn on our standby. If you did want to change your countermeasures, you just go up one. You click whatever. So if you want two chaff to launch with two flare, you just do that. And then you'd go back. Brightness if you want to. And we're going to save and return. INS is ready. So that means the GPS is aligned to where the physical airplane is. So our navigation will be ready, but we have to make sure that it is aware that that's what happened. So we goes back we go back here, it's aligned to the ground. We want to align it to navigation. So we're gonna click nav and we're gonna click EGI mode right there. So now all of that goes away. Seat not armed, huh? So ejection seat should be armed. And what else do we have? Inverter is going to stay on. Battery is going to be battery power on. We can adjust our lights over here if we want to. Nose illumination. Let's turn on our signal lights. Compass. Formation. Anti collision. Doesn't want to go on. And let's flash our lights. Okay. We've got our oxygen ready. Normal. This is our tack end which we're going to set to transmit receive. They can enter attack in right there. ILS is going to be on. So we're going to set that to on. Mm, steer point, everything else is good. So we're just going to go to CDU indicator. Everything else is looking ready. Jammer, active, we've got a countermeasure display, it is right here. Now we're going to uncage this in case we need it. Targeting pod, we're going to actually turn that on. Go to targeting pod. not timed out. That's what it'll show in a while it'll actually um, it'll start it up. So our targeting pod is being displayed. Our TAD is over there. It's all good. You can see our targeting pod starting. Targeting pod is all good to go. Flare hot means it's good to go.